Welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast with your host, Chris Anderson. In this show, Chris and his guests will share their knowledge and experience on how to go from zero to successful entrepreneur. They have built their businesses from scratch and are now ready to give back to those who are just starting. Let's get ready to learn, grow, and elevate our businesses. And now your host, Chris Anderson. Welcome back to another recording of the Elevate Media Podcast. I'm Chris Anderson, your host. And this episode, you know, is early in 2024. If you're listening to this in the future, welcome back. Uh, But we just started the year out, right? And everyone has resolutions and they're trying to be healthier, do better things, become better people. Um, But a a lot of that comes down to our habits and how we can build those. And so that's what we're going to talk today about. And I brought on an expert in this area. Uh, and, you know, I've connected with him in the past at conference and, and just a, a good dude and cool dude. He got a lot of knowledge. So I'm excited to have Paul Levinson on the show today. Paul, welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me. I've been, I've been looking forward to this as well. It's great to see you and I'm excited to have this conversation all about habits and everything else that it entails. For sure. And, and so, yeah, I mean, you know, what, what got you into loving this topic so much? Like what? Why, why habits? Yeah, it's because it's everything, honestly. It's just, it it just, to me, I'm I'm a very logical person. And it's just like, if you keep peeling back the onion, right? As they say, right, peel what, go a layer deeper, a layer deeper. Habits, routines, what we do create everything else, right? Your actions create your life. And so if you cannot control that, if you control the inputs, then the outputs will take care of themselves. So I was a personal trainer for a long time and a nutrition coach. And I thought when I was working in a gym and I knew how to design workouts and I knew how to design meal plans, I was like, well, okay, that's all you need. Everyone's going to be healthy now because I have all the answers for them. But what you will know and anyone else listening probably knows is that we can have all that stuff and the vast majority of people still won't do it. And we know that because Google exists. Chat GPT exists and YouTube exists. And literally the answer to every question that you could ever have that is about information exists in a 0.1 second search in your fingertips right now. So what became interesting to me is like, well, what's the disconnect? What is the thing that is stopping us from all living our best, happiest, most fulfilled life, being the best version of ourself, being rich, whatever the thing is that you want, like what is the disconnect? And it was, in my understanding, habits routines, again, human behavior, human nature, all of these things kind of mean the same thing to me. And then it's like, all right, can we under, if we understand that, how can we reverse engineer that to make it easier, to make it better so that people actually do the things that they know that they need to do. And that's what I've been doing for the last five years and just working on for myself and for others. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. So I used to be an athletic trainer as well. So I understand in the field that you're in and talking about how hard that can be for people to to make changes. And I actually read a study and I have, I need to go back and find this one. Um, when I was an athletic trainer still about if you were to give someone or say, Hey, I have this pill you could take every day and you could be the healthiest person. You wouldn't have to worry about anything. You just have to take this pill. This study that was done said 80% of people would not take the pill. They would not do it because they would forget they couldn't get the, the discipline to do it, the routine, all that stuff. And, and exactly what you're talking about is building those routines, those habits. And I just, it's fascinating. It, 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 you know, we see it probably so much still like that's so true. Like all you have to do is do these small actions consistently and you can have the success. You can have the healthy uh, lifestyle. You can change your mindset. You can do all this, th- these things. And why do you think people struggle so much uh, to get into to changing habits and building these better habits? Because it's hard. Yeah. That's really the long and short of it. It's hard. And human nature, the nature of all life, all all animal life, but all cells, anything that is a cell in it has a life inside of it. And all cells, the way we became from a single celled organism all the way up to now humans that have iPhones and self driving cars and all that stuff is through survival, right? The, The one thing that all life has in common is that it has inside of it and programmed in its DNA that need to survive. Whether it's a plant, whether it's a dog, a bat, a single cell amoeba, or a human, we have inside of us the need to survive. And that's at the the most basic level. That's just like, again, programmed into your DNA. 
So anything that is hard feels like an affront to your survival. Mm -hmm. So anything that is challenging, anything that pushes you, anything that is not out directly applicable or, or doable to you in this moment feels hard because what you're doing is inherently easy. So what you already have is always going to be easier than what you don't have because you already have it. So going for a workout is always going to be harder than sitting on the couch or you eating a healthy meal is always going to be harder than going out and finding groceries and cooking it or whatever. And even if it's as simple as making the decision, doing what you're already doing, meaning sticking with the status quo, mm. right? I, I'm, I've always done it this way. Just creating a change takes extra energy. So everything else is built on top of that. You have inside of you, in, in your very DNA, the need, the want to stay the same, not change, do things that are easy. And now everything that you want to do is the opposite of that. It's hard. We need to change. Everyone knows that, right? It's like nothing changes if nothing changes. You got to do hard things. You got to, you know, set, but it's like, okay, like, and all of that is true. You do have to do hard things. Nothing changes if nothing changes. You have to push yourself out of your comfort zone, right? Muscles don't grow unless you break them down first. Everyone has to fail before they can succeed. All of these cliches and platitudes are true, but they go against everything inside of us. That's like, no, I just want to stay safe. I just want to be cozy and I just want to chill. And you have inside of you that fight going on at every given moment, which makes it harder. So then you have something like, well, why can't I just stick to a diet? It's like, well, because it's hard. It's hard to stick to that. It's hard to choose the foods. It's hard to every day choose something that you don't want to eat over something that you do want to eat. Yep. Like, yes, you have goals. Yes, you have all of these aspirations, but like that doesn't make it any easier to do. So there's a lot of pieces to it, but at the very, very base level, it's just that it's hard and we don't want to do hard things. A hundred percent. Man, it's, how great would it be if we could just chill all day and uh, still succeed and still hit our goal, man? Everyone would do it. Everyone would do it, right? The whole other cliche is if it was easy, everyone would do it. So, you know, if people do want to do it, you know, they got their mindset, they want to do this. What are ways that they can start to implement in their lives to help them build better habits? See, obviously, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? That's kind of the, the thing. So what what can people do to start implementing in their lives better habits so they stick with it, so they, you know, overcome the feeling of, I just want to be comfortable. I don't want to do hard things to, no, I'm going to go to the gym anyways, because even though it's hard, I'm still going to do it. So it's a few different things. First thing is like you said, right? If it was easy, everyone would do it, right? I, always, I also always say, if it was easy at all, it would already be done. Meaning yeah. anything that you set a goal for, anything that you have to think, I want to do this thing, you're inherently saying this thing is hard because if it wasn't, you ha would have already done it. True. No one sets a goal to eat more McDonald's. No one sets a goal to watch more Netflix. No one sets a goal to tie their shoe or brush their teeth right. because these things happen automatically because they're easy and easy things happen with no friction. Mm -hmm. So th the first thing is to understand the rules of the game. Right. These are just, I'm just saying what the rules, this is literally just the, the nature of life. Yeah. So if life is to want easy things over hard things, then you have to ha do one of two things. You have to find something that is both easy and gets you to, towards your goal, or find something that you care so deeply about that it's worth all of the extra frustration, the pain, the anguish, the suffering, and whatever else will come with it. I think that often people think that they are okay with it, but I, something I say all the time to my clients is check the tape. That's all you have to do. It does, does the tape, does the, if we had a VCR recording of this and we went and checked the tape, like every game after a football game, they go and they watch tape, right? Every game after a basketball game, they go and watch tape. If we check the tape, are you taking the actions that a person who wanted that goal would get? And if you aren't, then Either it's one of two things, either it's too hard or you don't want it bad enough. And that's okay. And either one of those are fine answers, but now you have to just say like, okay, so like you have to, now you start at the beginning. The beginning is goal setting. People set bad goals. So they pick goals that are too big, that are too hard, or that they don't have an investment in that they don't care about as enough. So like when it does get hard and it will always get hard, there's never a time where it doesn't get hard. It's not usually it's hard right from the beginning, but at the beginning we have a little bit of like, a little bit of energy. There's some dopamine going. It's like, okay, this is a new thing. It feels good. It's shiny. It's new. So we can push ourselves in the beginning, but that flattens out. We lose that. And that's when you will only keep going. If you have a real reason, this is why every person, every coach, every book is start with why, 
right? Why, why are we doing these things? Why, why does it matter? Which is great. You need that. But again, if that were enough, then the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek that sold 100 million copies would have solved all of this stuff about 10 years ago. Same thing. It was just, oh, if there's a one secret to habit building, go read Atomic Habits. I'm sure you yeah. have. If that was, if, again, if there were one thing that solved this stuff, all of yeah. these books would have solved. We have the answer. You can go read about habit building. I've read all the books. It's pretty simple. Make small habits, make them chunkable, make them understandable. Like it, it, you can learn in an afternoon how to build habits. But yeah. the piece that people miss is they, they set themselves up for failure before they even start by picking goals that are too hard. And again, it's like, it goes back to so, well, didn't you just say I have to do hard things? And yes, you do. But again, everything is hard, yeah. right? And so if everything is hard, then you have to choose the easiest of the hard. So yeah. an easy example for this is exercise, right? People will go, well, like, I just don't like running. It's like, well, then don't run. If you are trying to get fit by running and you do not like running, you have already chosen failure. You have already chosen. You basically said, I'm going to quit eventually because I don't like the thing that I'm trying to force myself to do. So go do Zumba, go cycling, go swimming, go climbing, go lifting, go do CrossFit, go work out with bands. You go, like there's literally infinite things to do. Yep. The same thing with, with healthy eating. It's like, well, I don't like doing no carbs. It's like, okay, well then eat carbs, but find another way to eat healthy that you that is easier for you because you don't hate it so much. So right. we have this thing in our society. It's like, you know, 75 hard. It's David Goggins. It's like, you're just, just man up and just do it. And it's like, yeah, there's a place for that. And there was a time where like, yes, you have to just shut up and do the thing. Yeah. But that is for short-term, small goals, mm -hmm. right? Getting yourself to the gym. Like, yeah, you just, you just got to do it. But if you're talking about something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, like being healthy, like working on your business, you're trying to build a business here, right? That's what this, this show is about. You're trying to, you're trying to elevate your, your, your business, your brand, your make money. Like that's something that you're going to have to show up day after day after day after day, not for just 75 days, not for just six months, not for just a year, for the rest of your life or until you retire or sell that business at some point. But let's say you're going to put a decade or two in. So if you're trying to do that through sheer force of will, through sheer gritting your teeth and just and just doing it, it's just like you're, you're, you're playing the game on hard mode and you don't need to do that. The, the secret is find a way to get to the point that you're trying to get to in the easiest way possible. Now, again, everything is going to be hard, but the easiest of the hard things, right? So if you're doing media, like there's TikTok, there's Instagram, there's YouTube, there's podcasts, there's all these different things. What's the thing that you enjoy the most? Because making content sucks no matter what, right? It's hard. It's still, it's still a task. But yeah. like me, I have a podcast because I like podcasting. Right. So I'm willing to put in the time editing, to do the interviews, to do the things for my podcast because I'm passionate about podcasting and podcasting lights me up. So although it still has the hard aspects, it's easier for me because it's something that I enjoy and I can get enthusiastic about. So I think starting with enthusiasm is a big thing that people miss. You love listening to podcasts, but have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Maybe you want to build a brand, grow your business, or are looking for an excuse to talk about your favorite hobby. Whatever your reason for making a podcast, Buzzsprout is the place to start. Since 2009, Buzzsprout has helped over 300,000 people launch their own podcasts. Buzzsprout walks you step-by-step -step through the whole process and will give you powerful tools to start, grow, and monetize your podcast. Ready to get started? Click the link in the show notes to get our free step-by-step -step guide to starting your podcast today. Yeah, I think, and that's a great point. And I, I wonder too, so we obviously, you know, only see percentages of people's lives, you know, the stuff we see as in public on social media, things like that. But we look at those maybe ahead of us who are more successful and they just seem to be, you know, crushing, you know, in the goals, hitting the metrics, all these things. Do you think there's something with your stuff within your studies that separates people who are quote unquote more successful or ones who hit goals better? You know, David Goggins, as you mentioned, you know, he's able to overcome a lot of things versus you know, Joe Schmo is just laying on the couch who wishes he could do things. He's just not David Goggins. Is, is there anything that separates people at all? Or is it just that David Goggins understands what you've laid out on how to take the small, hard things? And keep yeah, going? I don't think David Goggins would agree with my my philosophy, <laughs> but I think there's three things. Yeah, there's three things that separate people. One is all right, everything that I was just talking about. Inherently, some people know to do this 
just subconsciously. So I think that people don't know that they're doing this, but they are. Meaning the people who are the most successful in CrossFit, mm. I don't think that those people would have been successful rock climbers, but they found the thing that they like. It just happened to be they got lucky and went to a CrossFit class. They excel in CrossFit. They like CrossFit. They got into CrossFit. They sell into a community of CrossFit. Now they're winning the CrossFit games. If they had have gone to a ballet class that first day instead of a CrossFit class, I do not think that they would be the number one ballet person in the world. Yes, some people do, but but for the most part, no. Right? You understand all, as well, right? Everyone exists, everything, everyone exists on a bell curve, right? You know, the concept of a bell curve? Yeah. Bell curve is the normative distribution. And most people are average, but then we have outliers on both sides. So we have people who are extremely lucky and get everything for nothing. And we have people who get the shit end of the stick who get nothing for everything. So you have to understand that some people just get that. Some people, yes, they are just lucky. They find success with very little effort. That's that person who doesn't do a single crunch or a single anything. And then all of a sudden this uh, summer comes, they're like, take your shirt off. They still have a six pack. And you're like, what the hell? I was working out all year. And it's like, that's just how life goes sometimes. Yeah. So on one side of things, again, we have that some people inherently find this. They find the thing that they actually do easier. It's still a hard thing, right? Someone competing yeah. to be a champion in the CrossFit games is still extremely hard. Like you can't say that that's easy, but I say, I mean, it's easy in the sense that it's enjoyable to them and they found the right thing that works for them. The same thing about, again, going back to, I just use diet and exercise because I think it's a very easy analogy that everyone can get, get behind, but it's the same thing with business, right? People will talk about like putting in 12, 18 hour days in their business. And there's people who do that because they have to. And then there's people that do that because they want to, because they found what they love and it lights them up. And those people who are doing it because they want to, it's like, it's probably still not a great long-term strategy, but at the end of the day, they're going to make it because they're doing the thing that they found there. Whereas someone who's just doing it because they're like, well, Gary V said, you got to grind. And it's like, that person is going to burn out because they're not doing it. So there's a luck aspect there. So that's part of what, right? It's just that, again, some people just found the right thing at the right time. Yeah. The, the, the other part where it's like, okay, like why do some people find success and some don't is that you have to realize that we get to define what success means, mm -hmm. right? And on the other side of that, there's what's what's known as uh, survivorship bias, right? So survivorship bias is the fact that we only hear the stories of the people who win. Yeah. So the the David Goggins, right? That just just man up, just shut up, just do it, just do it. Like yeah, he wrote a book. His book sold ten million copies. He's he's super famous now. He's on Joe Rogan. How many people are there trying to live by that lifestyle, that mindset that are not doing it because that does not motivate them? So again, he was lucky in the sense that, that he found a style of motivation that worked for him, but we are not all perfect robots. So that's a big mistake that people make is like they try to use other people's things. This is why as a coach, when people come to me for coaching, whether it's you know health, mindset, business coaching, I, I, the first thing I tell them on the first call is like, what I'm not going to do is try to put you into the Paul system or the whatever system. What we're going to do is it's not about find, putting you into my container. This is about building a container that fits Chris. That's yeah. specifically designed for you. Because if there were one secret hack for motivation or for habits or for routines, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. I would be flying around on a plane with Jeff Bezos because I'd be the richest person alive because I would have solved literally everything. Right Again, this is the crux of human nature. If I could get people to do things that they don't want to do, everyone would be rich, everyone would be fit, everyone would be happy. There's no simple answer for that. And that's because people are different. So we see these successful people and we try to base our story on theirs, but not realizing that there's 10,000 people doing that. And you're just looking at the two who popped off on Instagram thinking like, whoa, what a good job. But it's like, well, two out of 10,000 is not a winning ratio. I don't want to put my, put my money on that horse, but that's what you're doing because you don't understand. You don't see that that's a different, like that you, they are getting success when so many other people failed doing the same thing. And then, like I said, the, the other piece of that is that we define what success means to us and we are following the path of what society says success is. So going back to, again, like what, it, what lights you up? What do you get enthusiastic about? What are you happy about? What do you enjoy? All of these, all of these words where it's like, if you're just doing something because, well, society says success is getting to the top of my company and, you know, becoming rich so that I can buy a big house and retire at whatever. It's like, I don't know, is that what makes you happy or, or not? Because if it is, then like, that could be a good thing for you. But if you're just doing it because that's the way that it's always been done, or that's what I'm 
supposed to do. I throw air quotes up if anyone's just listening, supposed to. I hate that word because there's nothing that's supposed to be. Right. So are you following a narrative that's been laid out for you by the media, by your parents, by your boss, by literally anyone? So now, again, to your question of like, well, why are the successful people successful? It's a, it's a confluence of things, right? They got, they got lucky. They picked the right thing. Maybe they're just successful in spite of what they're doing, right? So that's the thing. People are like, oh, David Goggins is successful because he's so like he, he, he's, he, like his mindset is like steel. It's like, or maybe he's successful in spite of that, even though literally no one else can do that. He's just the outlier, right? The, the, the bell curve. He's yeah. the outlier who can do the worst thing, which is just try to willpower your way through it because science will show you willpower does not work. Relying on willpower is a fast track to nowhere. But if a million people try it, someone's got to get it there, right? Like at least one person is going to do it. And because he's the only person, he'll become very famous. And like, he'll just use that. And same thing, right? Anything with, Iceman Wim Hof. It's like, you can go in the ice and just breathe. It's like, I don't know. Again, there's 7 billion people on earth. Maybe one person gets to just go in the ice and not be cold. Like, I don't know the, what the answer is. But right. like, yeah, look at one single person and be like, I should be like that because you shouldn't. You're you. And that goes back to finding what makes you happy and the habits that you want to build so that you can build your life. So what is success to you? What is happiness to you? And then again, you reverse engineer it and you build that for yourself. Yeah. I, and I think that's a huge thing. Like, you know, because when I first started, you know, I, big goals of business and I saw big goals of business, but um, as far as like success, right? Success, I'm already successful. You know, I get to, I get to build this from home. I guess. And, and the more important thing with this is I get to, I get to build this from home and watch my boys grow up. Like I get to spend time with, with those little guys as I do this, they get to see, you know, how to navigate ups and downs in life. And so like that to me, I'm already, you know, super successful, you know, I'm already rich beyond anything I deserve. And so anything else that comes from it, like, it's just a bonus. And, and so I'm super excited for that and what we can do with it. But yeah, I think determining what your success is and, and, you know, with that too, it can even take some stress and some anxiety off of you because it's like, I don't have to be David guy. I don't have to be Greg Cardone. I don't have to be Wim Hof. Like I, I'm me, you know, and I'm where I'm supposed to be and I'll just take one day at a time. You know, and keep headed towards those goals and uh, keep, you know, you know, I always say 1% better each day, you know, and I know I didn't coin that, I didn't create that, but, you know, just what can I do that's hard that, you know, pushes me a little bit better uh, in the direction I want to head each day. You know, some days you just, some days you just miss the mark and, and you don't get that 1% better, but how fast do you get back on the horse? How fast do you get back on, on, you know, that path of improvement? And not let yourself just spiral, spiral down. So, you know, is that part of something you've got people in? Like if they are, how do they stop the spiral? Like if they're like, oh, I messed up today. I didn't make it. Oh, it was not worth it. Like, is it just go back to your why? Is it just go back to that? What do you kind of, how do we do it? Yeah. So it's, you, you'll notice, right. You ask these questions and I keep giving you different answers, right? Because it's like, with the way I, I look at this stuff is like, again, I'm, you know, again, I use that analogy in the beginning of peeling back the onion or there's a concept of going upstream. Right. So you ever heard of the concept of going upstream? It's like you're you're standing on a bridge and you see a kid floating down the floating down the river and like, oh my God, you jump in and you you pull the kid out and then you get onto shore and then you see another kid floating down the river and you like jump in and you you pull the kid out and then you see a third kid and then all of a sudden some guy who's standing on the shore with you starts running up running up the, the river bank. You're like, What are you doing? We gotta save these kids. And he goes, Well, I'm gonna go upstream and see who's throwing all these kids into the river. Right. So that's what upstream is like figuring out the problem before it becomes a problem. So for me, right, it's again, like we were talking about like uh, the, the negative spiral. It's like, well, that started when you set the goal, when you chose something that you weren't equipped to handle. You set yourself up for success, for, for su success or for failure when you do goal setting, when you do habit building. Is this something that is realistic for you? I have a whole framework that I take people through uh, for, for goal setting which I call easier, right? This is something that we went over. I did a whole talk about this when, when we first met. Um, easier, E-A-S-I-E-R is literally an acronym because I take people through this framework because again, it's so important. If you don't get this right from the beginning, you're going to, you've already failed. Like I said before, it's just a matter of time. You've chosen failure by not setting goals right. So if you're like, if you're getting to a point, now don't get me wrong, anything can happen once, right? You, 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 you mess up, you fall off. Like you said, that's just get up, get back on the horse. You have a bad day, you spiral out. That's okay. We, we're, we're fine with that. Failure is fine. Failure is not final. When I, when I talk about failure, I talk about capital F failure. And the only way you capital F fail is when you quit. Yeah. And 
when I say self-sabotage, when you when you set yourself up for failure, it means you're, you're going to quit eventually because you're going to drive yourself insane trying to do the same thing over and over and not getting the result, right? And we know that the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over without without getting anywhere. And so when you set yourself up with bad goal setting, you're putting in the effort, you're doing the stuff, but you're not getting the result. And your brain will never let you do that for too long. It's again, you're going back to your brain always wants to save energy. So it is not going to let you try, 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 fail, 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 try. You can try and fail a few times, but that's how you're going to spiral. So my point to that is if you just mess up once, you spiral out once, whatever negative thought thing, it's like, okay, like we have tactics for that. But if you're finding yourself coming back to that over and over, meaning I'm always doing X, Y, and Z. I always start a diet. I'm good for six weeks and then I fall off. I always try to work out and then I hurt my shoulder. I always start a business and I'm good until we get to marketing. It's like, well, then that's the issue. It's not like, how do you stop spiraling in those moments and pull yourself out? It's like, set yourself up for success better by not picking a diet you quit in six weeks, by not doing something that hurts your shoulder, by hiring a marketer who is going to do the part that you suck at for you. So it goes back to like, we have to start from like the very beginning. And then once you're doing that, right, again, now let's assume we did everything right. We, we set good goals. We went through the easier framework. We, we did all of the things right. It's like now, if I mess up, then it's just a mindset thing, right? Then it's just remembering that it's, it's just perspective because when we're in it, it feels very final mm-hmm. and extreme and finite. So when I'm in it and I fail, I mess up. It's like, I put all this money into an ad campaign and it flopped. Or again, I was working out super hard to lose a bunch of weight and I didn't, or I, whatever it is. It's like, okay, it's like perspective, zoom out. And this is what a good coach will do. This is what a therapist will do. This is what just a good best friend will do. She was like, okay, but is that really the end of the world? Yep. You know, like what, what's really going on here? Because my, my favorite saying is you can't read the label from inside the jar. So when you're too close to it, you, you can't understand what's going on. And this is all a coach does. When people hire me as a coach, I'm like, my only job is to just be a second set of eyes for you and see things from a different angle that you don't see things from. And because you will be so absorbed and you're like, oh my God, everything's bad. The world is burning. And it's like, well, hold on. Like, what if you looked at it like this? What if it wasn't actually the world is burning? What if it actually is just like just a small speed bump on the road to success? And now you keep going. You don't spiral. You don't fall off. So there's, there's, again, like it all starts with goal setting. It all starts with building those habits and the routines from the very beginning. And then from there, it's just, again, keeping that perspective of realizing that no one thing can be that bad and making sure that you realize that no failure is final unless you allow it to be so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's huge. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, and I've been there, you know, we focus on the, the moment right now, the, the issue, quote unquote, the quote unquote, small failure, F failure, but we forget to zoom out. Like you said, we forget to look at it in the grand scheme of things like, Hey, you know, a year from now, you're going to forget this moment probably because it's so small and finite in the, in the whole scheme of things, just get, get going again. Um, and you know, it's, it's funny. It's like personal example, like I was working out months ago and, and hurt my back. And so I was out for a little bit cause you know, it just sucks. And I had to heal and that, that's hard for me. But when I started back, uh, I was getting going and came to my first leg day and I already hate leg day. Like most people, this leg day sucks. It's always, you always are sore more and you know, it's whatever. But so I'm, I'm starting, I'm like, man, okay. My back just got better. I hate leg day. I could skip today and just say, I mean, you know, I'm still trying to heal. I'm still trying to protect my back. Or instead of going all out, like what a lot of times I do, I was like, I'll just, I'll just do one set of each of these exercises. You know, I'll just do one, one instead of three, three sets, I'll do one and I'll just start that way and I'll start at lower weight and it'll just, even though it might look completely like, you know, whatever to someone else, like I don't care. Like if I just start small, I'm not going to be as sore the next couple days, next week <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to get hurt again. So like, but at least I'm doing it. And so it's like, okay, then I'm not going to quit because I'm not going to be as sore. I'm not going to get hurt again. And so just, and then next time, you know, maybe I'll do two sets or, or, you know, do another week of one set. And so like, that was just a personal thing. Like just recently, I was like, yeah, instead of just going, trying to go out and just hating life after leg day, just getting back from an injury, like I'll just start small. I'm doing something though. But sometimes we forget we can do that. Yeah, it's, it's exactly. So, I mean, again, for tactical things for people listening, be like, this guy's talking for an hour and hasn't said anything yet. Practical thing is exactly that, right? Break your habits down into the smallest 
possible thing that will get you a result. Yep. So, and there's a, there's a saying that I got from one of my coaches years ago that I love that I was always stuck with me, which is done is better than perfect. Yep. We, right. We want like, again, like what's better. Like you could be like, well, that work, that workout sucked. I barely lifted anything. And it's like, but you did it. Yep. Whereas you could have tried to make it perfect, got, and then avoided it and then not done it at all. And that goes back right back to what I was saying in the beginning, the enthusiasm piece, right? Like it's like, you couldn't get enthusiastic about doing a heavy ass leg day. Like it just, <laughs> that wasn't maybe, maybe one day you will, again, you'll ramp back up to it. And I'm sure you'll get back there. But yeah. in that moment, you couldn't. Now, again, there is the level of like, like you said, it's like, sometimes you just got to do it. Like you, you don't want to skip it. Like you just got to like, no, I got to like, I got to nut up today and just got to make this happen. Yeah. But there's a, there's a middle ground there where it's just like, not just forcing myself to do something I hate. This is exactly what I was saying before. Finding something that's so hard because it's so hard to do a workout no matter what, right? Leg day is the hardest day. That's not like hyperbole. That's not just like something people say. It's the hardest day because it's the hardest muscle group to work. Yeah. And that that's the the muscle group we want to avoid the most because you don't want to do hard things, right? So finding a middle ground that you could both do and not hate, again, I don't have to say enjoy because it's leg day, but to not hate and be able to do it, it's like, that is the win for the day. And if you yep. stack those a hundred times will be infinitely better than trying to get this perfect mystical thing that doesn't end up happening. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And man, this is, this has been, uh, uh, it's been awesome. We could go on and on and on about that because it is such a such a big topic, and you're so you know I mean just your knowledge in it is huge. And uh, but I've appreciated your time today, sharing all this, you know, and I think just making it real for people, like understanding, like those outliers. I think it's a big one. Uh, and so I appreciate how you shared it, how you navigated the conversation, and um, you know, just is it is also just good chatting with you and learning from me myself. So you know, if, if people want to connect with you get more help, see what you're doing, hear more from you. What's the best place for them to do that? Yeah, I appreciate it. And yeah, I could talk about this stuff for hours. That's why I have my own podcast because I do talk about this stuff for hours. It gets me fired up as you can hear in my voice. So the the West Bay, if people want to find me, it's on social media. It's just my name is at Paul Levitin across all platforms. So Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you want to find me. Uh, I'm right there for you. I also mentioned I have that um, checklist, the easier habits, right? Easier habit building. So that's a checklist that I created for people that will literally walk you through, okay, how do I know if this is a habit or a routine that I'm going to stick to? And you just use this checklist, E-A-S-I-E-R. So I, I have that as a PDF for anyone who wants it. Um, you can message me or I'll share it. However, uh, email me, paul at paullevitin.com. There's a million ways to get in contact with me. And the last thing is my podcast. Uh, which is Habits of Happy Humans. So I uh, would love, there's over almost 300 episodes right now for people to check out. So if you're into this type of stuff, the why behind the what of what we do, then that's a great place to start. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. Everyone, make sure you get connected with Paul. Get get subscribed to his podcast. Uh, super knowledgeable, super, super good guy. And just sharing a lot of uh, great, valuable takeaways on there. So Paul, again, thanks so much for being on the LA Media Podcast today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Elevate Media Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. See you in the next episode.